Before I start, um, I'll say that, uh, as you know, I do reviews over on Instagram right after Vogue releases the images, and I do a pretty thorough review and groupings. See, sometimes it's not as easy to see the themes, and I find it helps me to sort through the collection um, when I put them into categories, and then it helps me break it down and understand it a little more. You're going to see a lot more reviews popping up on the road. There's a lot of people out there with their first Margot bag doing reviews, and uh, it's an exciting time for the brand. What I'll say is it's with the row, it's really hard to review it if you haven't had a relationship with the clothing, the bags too, I would say. With a line like the row, a lot of it is contextualizing it, and for that you need to touch it, feel it, wear it, own it be with it in a way and then you really understand it and um, so I hope that I'm adding some value here uh, by giving you my review um, as someone who's been collecting the row for a number of years. Spring 2024. Uh, first let's talk about row codes. Muted palettes, uh, relaxed silhouettes, fluid fabrics, refined tailoring, not a lot of pattern, color used as accents, minimal, Lots of layering, usually oversized, not always, but usually. While yes, from one collection to the next, you can see similarities. And with the row, it seems like it's more obvious that you can see that they're similar. With someone like Mrs. Prada, I mean, she is just, she's really unique in this way. Right back from her first collection to now, every time it's different, there's something new. But uh, Sarah Rutson had said that uh, she did the, played this game with us on her Instagram account when she was a little more active. She asked us to identify the designer and she'd give us like three looks and they were all very different. And I think I failed the Prada one. I thought I knew my Prada, but I didn't because it's harder to see her codes. But with the row, it's not yet. And I actually don't want them to change too much because, I mean, my style doesn't change overnight. Uh, so the spring 2024 collection. Usually I take a very deep look at the first look because it's a hint, it's a direction. This first look was deceiving because then after I dug a little deeper and went into the collection, I saw these two looks and went, what? I, was, <laughs> I wasn't really sure, but then it became clear to me sort of what was happening. This collection stands out to me of all the other collections that I've seen from the beginning of time. It's much more casual, infused with other upscale looks. This one is sort of the first collection that feels a little bit like Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen brought a bit more of their own street style into the collection. And that's why it's cool, but that's also why people were confused about it and messaging me. I never had more messages about a show than I did after this one. So unlike the other collections, you can't just look at spring 2024 and say, oh, I get it and I love it. You kind of have to, you have to cut it up. And I said, you need to do it like a cross-sectional review. What's obvious to me is that this collection would have appealed to a broader audience because those of us, there are many people that just don't want to don a suit during the day. They're not dolled up in dresses and suits every day. They, they don't have to for work and maybe in their personal life, they don't want to. And so there's more casual offerings. They're Birkenstock-like shoes. There's distressed denim, obviously relaxed shirts and oversized coats, which is what we were used to seeing. What got me about this collection is for no other reason why people will want some of spring is because it feels familiar. And that's what I mean about you're seeing a bit of the Olsen designers themselves and their personal aesthetic in the collection. You know, whenever I see those accounts that have um, those paparazzi photos taken of, of the designers out on the streets and... Uh, at all the traction that those posts gain because there's such a fascination with their personal style. They really know how to dress and they don't even think about it is my guess. Just throw it on and go out and they look great. And what happens is as soon as one of those posts are released, it sends all of us into a frenzy. What is she wearing? Let's ID it. How can we get it? How can we create that look? I feel like they've kind of spared us the homework. In this collection, you're going to find a little color. You're going to find generous servings of red along with um, blazers wrapped around waist. It's something that I love doing personally with my own style as well, is wrapping a blazer around the waist. I like the absentee socks, and I like the mismatched earrings. 
There's lots of asymmetry, lots of edge, and those are the things that I really look for in a roll collection. But uh, let me start with the Fab Four. I mean, right away, there are looks that speak to me. Sometimes they change over time, and I change my mind, but usually uh, there are looks that jump out at me, and these four really stood out for a couple reasons. One, they felt very me, and two, the color palettes. I love, just love that rich brown burgundy um, in the bag, and it's turned on its side, which is kind of cool. That's the Geo there. And um, I love the camel with the gray green tee and I love the navy skirt and it's really also the styling. Um, everything about these looks, I looked at each one individually, I picked them apart. And then now we'll look, uh, I'm going to take you to what we expect and what we love. And this is what I would think is very married up with their codes. Um, it's oversized, it's masculine, um, oh yeah, I should have mentioned that in the house codes, it's usually very boyish. Um, it's masculine, this is uh, relaxed, and a lot of suiting, very big bags, oversized, right? There's an oversized and effortless vibe to these looks, and, and in very muted palettes. This is what we know, what we expect, what we love. Um, and then here we have more of that theme, but just infused with a little bit of color. And some people were saying to me, well, what, pink? Like, why pink? Well, I don't think that should be a shock. Both of the designers have been seen in um, pinks and purples, and uh, so, of course, it's going to make its way into the collection. But it's not just the color that's so appealing to me, though. It's how they've paired it with the burgundy. If you're tired of more black and gray and navy blue, then maybe this is something that you look to. And then this is the part I was talking about where... You, you know, I remember this. I remember that it wasn't just a few days before, I think, that Mary Kate was seen in this photo um, in New York with her distressed denim and her uh, alligator, though it's a Margot, but her alligator bag and everyone just went nuts for it because it's been a long time, right, since we've seen distressed denim and some people were pretty excited about it. And then of course it shows up in the collection. They're really doing us a service. I think here. I like that they've paired these looks with the red loafers. I don't think I would do it that way. It's not me, but I think it's very cool. The road does it like no one else. I mean, a lot of people, if you've noticed, there's a lot of designers now are starting to look like the row. They're really the guiding light in this domain of minimal luxury. Everyone is offering looks that look very similar to the robe, but what they don't do as well, I think, as them is the styling. And this look, Obviously, the dress is going to be incredible up close. I'm sure the beading and the weight of it and uh, the way it's constructed is incredible. But what really appealed to me was the styling, the t-shirt underneath, the jewelry, which is Lisa Eisner, and um, the tool at, and the wrist snaking through the tool, and then the socks. <laughs> Just unexpected, a little bit of asymmetry, a little bit of unusual accents. It's what takes them to a very different level. And it's why I think that right now there is no one really sitting in this category because it's a bit quirky. I mean, a little, like that's what Phoebe used to do uh, when she was at Celine and she does so in her own collection, but it's very quirky. And uh, Phoebe's I think is quirky, sexy, where I don't find the row to be so sexy. I think it's edgy and just very cool. And then I mentioned this coat before I, I was so bummed out. The Denise. The, I love this coat so much. I have it in the navy. I really wanted it in the tan. And then, I, I mean, I had it on my list to buy in the tan, and here's what happened. I, it was quickly selling out, and I couldn't understand why, and I saw the photo of Zoe, and I went, oh no, she's wearing it. That means we're not going to be able to find it. And that's exactly what happened, but I'm pretty good at finding things that aren't available, so I found one. I said, listen, give me an hour to sort this through, because I was debating between this one and um, another coat, and I can't remember what that one was. But anyway, I hesitated for an hour and it was gone. And what was so cool is the lining. The lining was this beautiful white silk and it, the contrast was perfect. I ended up getting the navy, which is very nice, but it's not the same. So because I missed out on that, I'm now contemplating Fleming. It's not the same color. It's probably gonna be a little more casual, but I like it, it's nice. Car coats are really making their way back, and uh, I know Ashley Olsen has a number of them. She really does like that length in a coat, so we're going to continue to see that coming up, both in men's and women's. And this is where it got interesting for me. It feels like there was a bit of crossover in the collection. I mean, sometimes the looks are very, just very New York. This was like 
The top half was very New York and the bottom felt a little bit Paris chic. This is where these two looks meet. I really like it. And I think I'm due for a change. I do like my longer lengths and, um, but I feel like maybe I'm ready for something cropped. And then 1950s Parisian chic. These are so pretty and so elegant. If you take these pieces and style them differently, they might be for you. I think a lot of people were texting me saying, well, I'm not going to be wearing something like this. And this doesn't feel very the row. It feels a little bit like Prada or Miu Miu. Yeah, a little bit, but the coats, the materials they use will be different. They're not going to be as structured. You can easily take one of these coats and wear them with your eglita jeans. They're going to look so cool. And you can take the hat and wear it with a coat belted, a floor length coat that's belted. It's going to change it significantly, but the items themselves might be very nice, will be very nice close up when you try them on. And then this last one, this look, uh, for so many reasons, look at that spread on the collar and the color of the gray. Uh, really, really lovely. The exaggerated shoulders, I guess, are continuing. Uh, they're not for me because I have broad shoulders and I don't really like that. Um, I don't want my shoulders bigger, but uh, I know that this was a look that was favored in my community and I love the bag. Might be too big, but we'll see. So now what I wanna do is talk about what was introduced and offered that was new for the collection. I mean, if you go to the Row website, you're gonna be able to see all of it now, but here are the shoes. So lots of new items and some carryovers. You'll be happy to know that the soft loafers are indeed coming back and um, in different colors. Uh, but the three shoes that I think are worth paying attention to, the ones that are the change and really carry the energy of this collection are these ones. The Hugo Slide, the Buckle Sandal, and the Carry Loafer. The Hugo Slide is very much like a pair of Birkenstocks. The buckle sandal I'm really excited about because I loved it in these, these looks paired with the socks because then it's just that much more functional, right? It's not relegated just to spring and summer. I can carry it through to the fall and winter, so I like that. But I especially like the style of it. Very simple, looks comfortable. Sometimes these shoes can be tricky. Remember, that's why I started my channel because the shoes aren't always as comfortable as they look. So I really am hoping that these are comfortable because this buckle sandal is a pair that I want. The Hugo Slide I've been thinking about, but I already have a pair by James Purse that's very similar, so I'm not sure that I need them, but I will definitely try them on and so I can give you some information on them. And then we have the Carry Loafer, of course the red, which was what was so special, I guess, in the collection was that vibrant color um, and uh, very Mary Kate, right? The red everywhere is very Mary Kate. Of course there's other offerings, but these are the ones that stood out to me. And then uh, bags, same thing. There's a lot of continuation, uh, Margot's, and you can go through, uh, you'll see all of them there, but uh, the standout new bags to me, the ones that are worth paying a little more attention to are the East West Margot, the Domino bag, the extra large George, as I mentioned before, and the Oregon uh, Raffia tote. The Raffia totes are really cool. It looks like one of them might be in store only, although sometimes the wholesalers do carry them. I like the black Oregon Raffia tote. That one really spoke to me, as did the extra large George, because I like a very big bag. And I like that it looks like it's not round and going to hold its shape away from my body. So this one might be nice and uh, hopefully the leather gives a bit. And then the domino bag. The domino bag is one I can't wait to see. Obviously, I would love to have it in the alligator, but one can dream. Um, that would be wonderful. But the black domino looks very, very nice. And since I have the India in the brown and the domino, it's nice because it looks like it goes over the shoulder and it's uh, zipped and very practical and very functional. Uh, I got a lot of questions already on the East West Margot. I don't know the dimensions just yet. I will soon. And um, this one's nice. It's definitely going to look longer as you carry it. I feel like the 17 Margo's more, it's very well balanced and that's still the size and the style I prefer in the Margo bag, but the East West is unusual, it's different. And it, right now, if you're looking for differentiation, that's one to look at. In terms of what I'm pre-ordering and what I'm looking for, uh, looking to purchase, well, first of all, I'll say this is a whole look that I would want, but the coat is another in my dreams. Um, and I love, love the color of the slides, like the Hugo slide in that color is very rich and paired. But this, but I, I can say that I'll probably get the T, um, but the rest will be a wait for sale, maybe look for something that looks similar. I like that it's a boy girl look. Um, so the coats that I like because I'm all about the bag and the shoes and the coat, and that's not a surprise 
to you because my capsule collection, those are the three things that I covered, right? The bag that you should get, the shoes that you should get and the coat, because those are the things that are making the biggest impact to your wardrobe. Uh, so I talked about bags and shoes, but the coats are, these are the ones that I love the most. I like the Fleming in this black and I like the Brogan coat. I love a parka. This color's really nice. It's a dark navy. And I also like the Nat coat in black. I, th I think this is a coat that would sit in my mudroom and would be used for any occasion. I love my long coats, but they're not the easiest to wear all the time. Car coat lengths are very practical, very functional, and they go with everything. So this might be one of those. I also like the Montrose coat in the beige. It's just going to be a matter of touching and feeling the fabric to understand if it's comfortable enough. I need it to feel good and I need it to feel soft and comfortable to, to invest in a coat. I guess I'll close off by saying that maybe it isn't necessary that a collection is cohesive and that it has a story and that the story is woven together neatly. Maybe it's okay that there are different looks in a collection and an offering that is um, maybe not consistent and seamless. Because if we're looking for designers to dress us entirely and tell us how to dress, that's, I mean, maybe that's not what we should be looking for. Maybe it's guidance and direction. This collection is going to have a lot of wider appeal, and maybe that's what they're going for. I mean, we have a new audience now, and there's a lot of people finding the Margot bag, and they don't dress like the row head to toe. So uh, this will almost like ease them in to the row house so they don't have to go all in right away. And that is my spring 2024 review. And as always, as I get the items and um, I have a good sense of size and fit, I'll come back with more detailed reviews.